Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about my top 20 favourite films from the year 2000. These are all in accordance with the release dates from IMDb again, and these are just my personal top favourite 20 films from this year. There's no right or wrong to this, completely subjective. But yeah, these are just my, my favourite ones from this year. So that being said, I'm going to get straight into the honourable mentions. Uh, not many for this year. Uh, going to kick it off with a few animated ones. Uh, Emperor's New Groove. I should absolutely love this film. I just think it's absolutely fun and hilarious. Uh, the villains in this, so great. They have such chemistry together. The slapstick humour is just, just absolutely fantastic. Uh, you got David Spade and John Goodman as the main good guys as well. Just really, really love this one. Um, next honourable mention for me is another animated film, uh, and that's Chicken Run. Um, done by the same guys that did uh, Wallace and Gromit Aardman animations. Um, got some really, really dark moments in this film as well, but it's a ton of fun. Uh, next honourable mention for me is Billy Elliot. Uh, yeah, love love this film. It's not a film I enjoyed the first time I watched it, but it grew on me over time. Uh, just a fantastic story about this this boy whose who's dad's a minor who pretty much wants him to be a boxer, but he, he ends up taking an interest in ballet instead. Um, Final Destination uh, I know this is sort of was the start of a successful sort of horror movie franchise but I've only ever seen the first one um, just this really really creepy movie where uh, death is the villain and uh, next honourable mention for me is Remember the Titans uh, great sports movie this one uh, with Denzel Washington and uh, next honourable mention is Frequency with Dennis Quaid. Uh, great movie, this. Uh, I thought it was really, really underrated. Um, next honourable mention for me is Finding Forrester. Fantastic uh, little drama film with Sean Connery and Anna Paquin. Um, next honourable mention for me is Meet the Parents. Robert De Niro and Ben Stiller. Just a great comedy. Um, next one is probably a film most people would probably have on their list of top films from 2000, uh, Requiem for a Dream. It was just way too dark for me. Uh, really well made film, but um, yeah, I just found it really confusing and just uh, really, really abstract and, and strange, um, but I did enjoy it. Um, by no means do I. I think this is a bad film at all. Uh, it was just, it was just way too strange for me. Uh, my last honourable mention is Miss Congeniality with Sandra Bullock. Just a fun rom, not really a rom com, but it's got some of that in there. It's like a secret agent is in, working for the FBI, has to have a makeover for a, the Miss Congeniality contest. Um, but yeah, it's got a great supporting cast with. Uh, Michael Caine as well. Um, but yeah, it's hugely enjoyable, but by no means not great. So, that being said, I'm going to kick off the list straight away with number 20 for me. Uh, and that is Guy Ritchie's Snatch. Uh, a film I pretty much hated the first time I saw it. Didn't get it at all. Um, but I gave it a second shot and it was quite enjoyable and quite uh, quite a fun watch. Um, got Brad Pitt in there, Vinnie Jones, uh, Stephen Graham. And Jason Statham, um, just yeah, just a fun gangster British gangster movie that was quite enjoyable the second time, second time round. Um, next for me at number nineteen is M Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable, a uh, very underrated superhero supervillain movie. This one um, with Bruce Willis and Sam Jackson, um, probably. Shyamalan's most second competent film, in my opinion, um, right after The Sixth Sense. But yeah, this was just a, a really, really interesting watch. Uh, and I massively enjoyed it. Uh, at number 18 for me is a film. I'm not sure how many people have heard of this film, but it's called You Can Count On Me. Uh, I just thought this was a great, great American drama film that I absolutely loved and enjoyed with a great cast. Laura Linney, Mark Ruffalo... Um, Matthew Broderick's in there as well. Uh, yeah, I completely 
fell in love with this film the first time I saw it. Uh, second time, it didn't have the same effect on me, but it was still great. Um, yeah, fully recommend that one. Uh, number 17 for me is the film that actually won Best Actress at the Oscars this year, and that is Erin Brockovich with Julia Roberts. Uh, she sort of plays this this woman who's got a couple of kids, uh, been divorced twice, uh, and ends up sort so of uncovering this uh, conspiracy about contaminated water um, and basically seeking compensation now for people that suffered from this, this massive mishap uh, and earns them quite a lot of money. Um, but yeah, it was just a, this great legal drama um, that I massively, massively enjoyed. Albert Finney's in it as well. Uh, at number 16 for me is Comedy with Jim Carrey, Me, Myself and Irene. Uh, I love this film. It really gives Jim Carrey a lot to work with, a lot to um, a lot to a lot to do, a lot a lot of a uh, lot of meat to chew, if, if that makes sense. Uh, whether you love Jim Carrey or hate him, uh, if you if you do if you don't like Jim Carrey at all, you're not gonna like this film. Um, but I absolutely loved it. Uh, the swearing in it was just off the charts and absolutely hysterical. Um, the three sons in it are just great. Just so entertaining to watch. They have such great chemistry together. Uh, Rene Zellweg is great in it as well. Just one of these funny, funny comedies about a, a, a guy who's pretty much suffering from schizophrenia. He's pretty much been pushed around and shoved around all his life, which has caused him to come up with this other personality that just doesn't take shit from anyone. Um, and I just thought it was just absolutely hysterical. At number... 15 for me is the first X-Men movie. I've got it in this trilogy here with the first three movies, uh, X-Men 2 and X-Men Last Stand. Um, the first one I just massively, massively enjoyed. I remember going to see it at the cinema when, I, when, it, um, when it came out. Uh, I was a massive fan of the cartoon growing up and it was just great to see some of the characters from that cartoon be brought to life in live action on the big screen. Um, Patrick Stewart and Ian McCallum just perfectly cast as um, Charles Xavier and Magneto. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Superb. Um, can't say much more than that. Great superhero comic book movie. So, at number 14 for me is one of my favourite foreign films. Uh, I don't know how many people have heard of this. It's called uh, Amaros uh, per Peros, which I believe translates to Life's a Bitch. Um, this was just a fantastic, fantastic film that I massively enjoyed. It's basically about three sort of different people that are brought together for one moment in time with this car crash that happens. Uh, you've pretty much got a, a thug who is involved in dog fights. Um, this sort of actress slash model slash celebrity. And you've got this homeless man who, who cares for uh, like stray dogs. But they're all brought together by this car crash that happens. Um, but I won't dare spoil what goes into it. But the end for me absolutely shocked me um, with what happens. I wasn't expecting it, but it was just it just so made sense with the way it was going and so realistic. This was directed by uh, the same guy who did um, Birdman and the Revenant, one of his most underrated films. Um, I just think it's absolutely fantastic and I can't can't really recommend this one enough. Um, so coming up next to me at number 13 is Mel Gibson in The Patriot. It's a fantastic, fantastic action war film. Um, Jason Isaacs in this as well as the, uh, the villain. It's just one horrible bastard. Um, pretty much kills two of uh, Mel Gibson's sons. Uh, in the movie, not to get into spoilers, but he, you just really, really root for his demise. Uh, and Mel Gibson is just such a likeable character in this film. Just a fantastic war film um, that I massively enjoyed. The scale of it is just absolutely superb. Um, yeah, it's right up there for me. Just one I find massively, massively entertaining. Um, so coming up next for me at number 12 is the Coen Brothers... Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? 
Yeah, I love this film. It's visually stunning. Um, based on, I believe, Homer's Odyssey, so a, a modern retelling of of of, um, of that story. Great cast with uh, George Clooney, John Turturro. You got John Goodman in there as well. Um, probably one of my favourite scenes in this is towards the end of the film. It involves the KKK. It's just such a beautifully shot scene where they're doing this this cross burning as as horrible as the KKK are this scene is magnificently shot um and I just enjoy it I love that that song as well the man of constant sorrow so good um yeah just a fantastic fantastic film and another hit for the Coen brothers in my opinion uh coming up next for me at number 11 is another really good foreign film and that is Battle Royale I've got it on Blu-ray here, I'll stick with this cover um, yeah, fan- fantastic fantastic concept um, it's basically school kids uh, put on this island and are told, you've got three days um, you've got to kill each other till there's one left, otherwise we'll kill you all, anyway um, how you do it is up to you uh, we put these collars on you as well if you're in certain zones on the island we'll trigger the collars and they'll they'll explode, just make sure you, you get out of there, it's just a fantastic fantastic concept and this movie just holds no, it doesn't hold back at all with its violence, it's just it's just so great um, I thought it was absolutely fantastic it sort of got Hollywoodized when they did the Hunger Games, which I know this film and, and the Hunger Games sort of get compared to a lot. Um the Hunger Games just doesn't hold a patch to this film, in my opinion. Um I think this this film tackled that story uh better. Uh, and I don't think it will ever really be topped. Um I haven't seen the second Battle Royale, but I've heard it's not as good as the first. So that's what really hasn't made me bother with that film. But I really, really enjoy this one. Um, yeah, so unapologetic with its violence and its its themes. Just a wonderful, wonderful uh, film. Uh, just, yeah, absolutely fantastic in my opinion. So, coming up next at number 10 for me is Best in Show. Uh, I thought this film was absolutely hysterical. It cracked me up so much. It's basically about all these characters and their dogs and how they're preparing for the best in show competition. You know who's got the best dog. Um, it's the characters in the movie that just absolutely make this. You've got a fantastic, fantastic cast with uh, Eugene Levy, uh, Michael McGeegan, um, Jennifer Coolidge, uh, Christopher Guest. So good and just so fun. It's the characters that make the film. They're the ones that are the stars and the main selling points to the film. They just make it absolutely great. They're just so, so, so wonderful. So colourful. Um, the reactions to like the outcomes to what actually happens in the film as well are just absolutely hysterical. I can't recommend this film. If you love dogs, it's absolutely great. It's got It's definitely got that spinal tap feel to it. Obviously, with um, Christopher Guest directing this film, it's just so great and so funny and I, I can't recommend it enough I've watched it twice and I loved it both times I thought just thought it was fantastic um, next for me at number 9 is Christopher Nolan's Memento this is a film that just breaks all the rules very similar to Pulp Fiction it breaks all the rules in the conventional storytelling through film um, everything is sort of out of order all the segments are told back to front um, it was just a fantastic crime movie that just kept you guessing all the time. It's a great thriller as well with Guy Pearce and Carrie Ann Moss. Just thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, as I said, it's a movie that breaks the mould in that conventional storytelling, but it's all the better for it. It's 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 so original and fresh with that storytelling. It's one of my favourite Christopher Nolan movies. Um, and that, for me, is saying a lot because I don't really like Christopher Nolan films. I just find them a bit too pretentious. Um, but this is one of my favourite ones. I really, really, uh, really, really dig it. Everything he makes looks fantastic, but I just don't necessarily... That doesn't necessarily make it a great film for me. But this is one that I really, really did enjoy. 
So at number eight for me is Robert Zemeckis' Castaway uh, with Tom Hanks. Yeah, it's, it does everything it says on the tin. Uh, Tom Hanks pretty much plays this hotshot who works for FedEx. He's travelling on a plane and the plane gets into this accident, cra- crashes, and Tom Hanks ends up being stranded on um, this remote island. Um, he's there for uh, for a good couple of years. And basically we just follow him on this island and what he basically has to do to survive and how he adapts to living there. Um he basically finds this this uh, this volleyball as well, which he turns into the the character Wilson, who just we is an inanimate object, but we care so much for it as well. It leads to this heartbreaking scene as well, where the two of them part ways, and it's just filmed so masterfully. Um, but it's it's so good. It it leads to a, a fascinating ending as well, uh, which I won't dare spoil. But I was I was just absolutely hooked by it, and I just thought this was a fantastic, fantastic film by Zemeckis. You know his films are uh, hit and miss, but he's got more more hits for me than misses. Um, but yeah, it's again it's a fantastic performance by Tom Hanks as well. You know, given a hundred percent as he always does. I just thought this was just absolutely great. So coming up next to me at number seven is probably the film most people would have at number one, at least in the top three, uh, is Ridley Scott's Gladiator with Russell Crowe. One Best Picture, one Crowe, uh, the Academy Award for Best Actor as well. Um, fantastic sword and sandals epic. Uh, so Crowe plays uh, Maximus, this, this pretty much this soldier who was pretty much wronged by uh, his, his emperor's son, Commodus. Um, turned into a slave and then made to work his way up through uh, the gladiator ranks Uh, Oliver Reed's last film as well he's just absolutely superb in this bit of a mentor to Maximus as well when he's going through the tournament you know he tells him win the crowd and you'll win your freedom I absolutely love Oliver Reed in this film it's such a shame that this was his last film but he's just absolutely, absolutely great. Um, yeah, it's it's the story itself is is superb. We the 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 scenery is involved are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, each fight is just so tense and edge of your seat that takes place. We really, really root for Maximus in this film. We just really, really want him to succeed and get get back what he lost. Heartbreaking scene uh, involving his family, which, again, I won't dare spoil. But the film leads to uh, a fantastic climax, which is very, very satisfying. Although it may not be the, the outcome we want, it's the outcome that fits best for the film, in my opinion. It's just superb. Uh, one of Ridley Scott's uh, best, in my opinion. It's up there with uh, Alien and... Um, Film and Louise for me. So coming up next to me at number six is again probably a film not a lot of people have seen, but it's uh, Batman Beyond's Return of the Joker. Uh, I'm a big fan of the animated series, and I really love the uh, Batman Beyond series that was set in the future. Uh, and this film sort of sees the Joker come back mysteriously come back to life where he was believed to have been killed. Now, there are two versions of the film. There's one with a very sort of... a, a, a watered-down version, and there's a, there's a version that doesn't really hold back with its uh, one scene in particular, which I won't dare spoil, but it's a very pivotal scene, very important scene, uh, with the death of a character, I won't say who. Um, but there was a very tame version, and there was a version which was a bit more graphic. This, unfortunately, is the tame version that I have, uh, but I have seen the the graphic version, and that is so much better, and uh, uh, they should have just left it alone and kept that that in. But this is great. This is the young uh, Terry McGuinness, who's basically taken on the mantle of Batman with Bruce Wayne, an older Bruce Wayne as his mentor, and the Joker is sort of resurfaced and reappeared in the future. And it's basically how did he survive? How did he, how did he come to still be in the future? Because in the future, 
although the Joker doesn't ex- exist in the future, he exists through cult gangs that followed him and sort of want to carry on the crime sprees that he, he started. Um, but yeah, that's really all I'm going to say about the film. I've got it in this two-pack here with uh, Mystery of the Batwoman, but Return of the Joker is just an absolutely superb film. Um, Mark Hamill, fantastic as the Joker. He's the best Joker, in my opinion. Um, far better than anyone else, although Joaquin Phoenix and he Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson all come close. And Cesar Romero in his own right as well. They're all great, but the best for me is Mark Hamill. Um, Yeah, it's just a fantastic, fantastic animated movie that I really, really enjoy. So, at number five for me is Traffic. I absolutely love this film. Not much of a plot to it. It's just sort of about these groups of people and what they go through. Uh, it's got a great cast with uh, Don Cheadle, Dennis Quaid, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Michael Douglas, Benicio Del Toro. The first film to have both Zeta-Jones and Douglas in it uh, together. As uh, I believe this was the first film they made after they got, but the pair of them both got married. Uh, don't actually have any scenes in it together. But yeah, it's it's a great, great, great crime film that I absolutely enjoyed. It keep kept me hooked from second one, pretty much. And I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. Very underrated in my opinion as well. You've got uh, Topher Grace's in this as well. Um, I just thought it was just absolutely fantastic. Fantastic film. So underrated in my opinion. So coming up next for me at number four. Is Sexy Beast with Ray Winston and Ben Kingsley? Um, I'm going to say this straight off the bat. This is my favorite Ben Kingsley performance ever. Uh, it's one of my favorite performances ever by anyone in any film. Uh, as he plays this this character called Don Logan, who is this absolutely ruthless, will not take no for an answer, crazy individual. Um, you just do not want to get on the wrong side of him at all. He's terrifying. Um, you've got Ray Winston, who plays this retired safe cracker, who's uh, basically retired to Spain and doesn't really want to get back into the racket. He's done with it. You know, he's happy living there with his wife, living in Spain with his wife, and just enjoys enjoying retirement. And and Don Logan, who's this gangster, who's pretty much right. I've got a plan um, together, but I need Ray Winston for. Um, to carry out the mission and it just it just escalates and Ray Winston just wants nothing to do with it um, and Ben Kingsley's just being just this persistent prick <laughs> uh, who just will not take no for, for an answer and it, it just leads to absolute fantastic fantastic acting by him um, the dialogue in it is just superb he's thriving on it and I think you can tell he's having a ball with it he's just absolutely enjoying the role and it's just a thrill to watch um, yeah I I can't recommend it enough It's it was just superb Ian McShane's great in it as well and uh, Amanda Redman just Superb cast, superbly acted. Uh, my favourite scene in it as well is when they're at the restaurant and they find out that Don Logan's coming over. Uh, just It was just a complete tear in the ointment for them. It just ruined their evening. You could just see everyone's face drop. Um, yeah, as I said, it's so good. Uh, it's a great little underrated gangster movie. does a lot with a little. Re- uh, relies heavily on the performances. But they're so good. So, uh, number three for me is Christian Bale in American Psycho. Uh, yeah, I love this film. Saw it a couple of weeks before The Dark Knight came out for the first time. And I just think it's absolutely fantastic. you got Christian Bale who plays this sort of big hotshot of Wall Street bank... Well, yeah, Wall Street banker who's... Pretty much living the high life and enjoys it, but he really sort of thrives off killing and murdering people and cannibalism as well. It's just, it's really, really strange, but it's got such fantastic, fantastic dialogue in it. The soundtrack in this movie is just absolutely superb. 
Krista Berg, New Order, Huey Lewis in the News, Genesis, Phil Collins. Oh, just love love the music in this film. It's absolutely superb. The graphic violence in it, the sex scenes in it are just absolutely crazy. Um, but the big question the movie asks at the end is, did all this really, really happen? And it leaves you to decide. Um, fantastic cast as well. I've said Reese Witherspoon, Willem Dafoe, uh, Christian Bale. Just absolutely insane, crazy movie. Um, that I absolutely love. My favourite scene in it as well is when they're all um, they're all sitting around and comparing business cards. Um, it's just something so little as that, and they, they talk about the colour of the card, the font of the card. It's just so interesting and so engaging. I don't know why, but it just is. Uh, I don't know if anyone else feels the same way about it, but yeah, it's just absolutely superb, and you absolutely are fascinated by this character, Patrick Bateman, played by Christian Bale. Um, you know, even his, his his daily routines that he talks us through and his tastes in music, it's just, it's so riveting and so engaging. It's one I just absolutely, absolutely love. So, coming in at number two for me is Almost Famous by Cameron Crowe. Uh, I adore this film. It's so good. It's basically set in 1973. We follow this fictitious rock band called Stillwater. Uh, it's a very, very good coming-of-age story. It sort of focuses on this young lad who wants to become a journalist and he ends up getting this this uh, this job for Rolling Stone magazine to do a cover on um, the band Stillwater and he ends up getting sort of in, included into their inner circle and going on the road with them, ends up going on tour with them. Um, spending time with the band, spending time with the the groupies, although they don't really like to be called that. Um, yeah, Kate Hudson in the film is absolutely great. Uh, Francis McDormand, Zoe Deschanel. Um, yeah, it's just a, a, um, a fantastic, fantastic rock film and a great, great coming-of-age story. Uh, my favourite scene in the movie is uh, a scene where the band is on a plane, and they sort of fear for their lives a bit. They think that this plane's going to crash and they all just sort of bear their souls and tell the truth and tell exactly how they feel to each other. And it's just superb, superb dialogue. Um, great humour in it as well. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman's in it as well as, as a sort of mentor to the young lad about how he, you know, teaches them about journalism. Um Great soundtrack as well, particularly when they're all on the bus and they're all singing Tiny Dance by Elton John. It's just a superb, superb film. Uh, three hours long, doesn't feel it. It feels about 90 minutes, to be fair. The movie just flows. Not one scene drags or is wasted. Just absolutely, absolutely love this film. Can't speak more highly of it. There was just one more film that I enjoyed more from this year. Um... And yeah, so that's why it makes the number two spot for me. So, my number one film from 2000 is High Fidelity with John Cusack. I was not expecting this film to be as good as it was the first time I saw it, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, if you love collecting vinyl and you love records and pop and rock songs and, and all that stuff, this is a perfect perfect film just um that captures all of that uh, so basically john cusack is pretty much pretty much uh the owner and manager of this of this record store it has these sort of uh these two workers that he never really officially employed they just kept showing up every day and started working there uh one of them played by jack black who's just infectious in this film he's just so funny it's my favorite jack black performance of all time so we basically follow John Cusack, who's basically talking to us, breaking the fourth wall, telling us about his top five breakups of all time. Um, you know, we just we, we see him growing up and he had all these different girlfriends and how he eventually broke up with them. And yeah, that's that's pretty much the movie. But it's the again, it's the characters along the way. The film is so fantastically directed by Stephen Frears, who this is his best film in my opinion. The film is just 
it's just wonderful. You can't really dislike the film at all. There's nothing really hateable about it, if that's the right word. I just fell in love with it and had a blast with it from start to finish. Uh, it is, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I can't, I can't praise it enough. It, it is just such a wonderful, wonderful watch, and it makes for a great rewatch as well. Um, I love the scene as well where um, one day the business is doing quite well and there's there's people in the store and Jack Black's showing someone around and he's like, the guy ends up with like all these records that he needs to buy and he's like, you don't own Blonde on Blonde, that is perverse. He's like, don't fucking tell anyone that you don't own this record, you know, it's going to be okay. Uh, and I, I've listened to Blonde on Blonde, it's a fantastic, fantastic album by Bob Dylan. But yeah, getting back to the the film itself, it's it's great. Uh, my favorite John Cusack film, I think. Uh, I really, really in, enjoy Better Off Dead, but uh, High Fidelity is probably my favorite film with him. Just, just absolutely wonderful. Uh, his sister as well, John Cusack's in it as well, and they were in a lot of films together. Uh, but yeah, this one, this one's my favorite from him. Just absolutely superb. So, yeah, that is my top 20 favourite films from the year 2000. So, I hope this has sort of given a bit of enlightenment if you've not seen any of these films and uh, maybe hopefully has, has triggered something to make you go and watch them, which I, I, I hope I've done. So, yeah, I'm going to leave the, the video there. If I've left any out that you've... I think I should watch and check out. These aren't all the films I saw in the year 2000. I did see a lot more as well. But these were just the ones that stuck out to me. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you um, feel so inclined, please subscribe and like the video and, and leave a comment. As I said, let me know any films that I've missed. And uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, take care.